one of the most familiar faces probably in the entire world. He'll always be Ben Cartwright to me. <laughs> no, really, I miss Bonanza, but he's going to be starring in a new television series called Griff. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Lauren Green? Great. Johnny, before anything happens, before I forget, I just want to compliment this fantastic aggregation of musicians. I was listening to them outside. There. Are they something else? They're fantastic. You know, you forget. You, you hear every night. Okay. You know, uh, you, you forget we're here every night, and you hear the band, and you start to take it for granted, and you realize that it is so great. Wow. Uh, just like to sit and do a concert some night. We'll do that some night when the show's not going. We'll just sit back and <laughs> let the band play, and we'll open the place for dancing and take tickets. Yeah. The only trouble is that Doc's shirt is louder than the orchestra. Yeah, that's one of, one of the problems we have. You know what I wanted to do once? We were going to do once when you were filming a Bonanza, and we didn't have a chance to do it because uh, they called one day, and uh, they wanted me to play a, a walk-on in Bonanza. I said, what I wanted to do, I wanted to... You, you had a very serious scene where somebody was to come into the door, and they were going to take me over and put a hat on and so forth because somebody had passed away or something, and I was going to walk in, and we never had time to pull it off, and I'm uh, sorry I missed that because I, I always wanted to be a, in a Western. Johnny, you have such great uh, authority. You might even bring back Bonanza just to do that scene. For one season, we get, just to get that in there. <laughs> we were talking just briefly before the show, but that had an incredible run. Yeah. Most successful show, uh, 14 years. And we'll be playing, uh, and the great thing about a Western is that it's never really dated. That's right. They're in full color, and in 15 or 20 years from now, there will be an entire new generation of youngsters who will grow up, have never seen that show, and because it is uh, historical in time, right. it's never dated the dialogue, nor... Right. Uh, the, the clothes sets. never changes. That's the great thing about it. How the about horses. The horses, a horse is a horse. <laughs> is a horse. Uh, how's the new show? Uh, I know you're going to play a... Uh, is a detective... Uh, Serious? Yes, I'm going to play a, a, a private detective. That seems to be the fashion these days. Uh, and I, I said to my agent, I said, a detective series? There are 35 detective series on the air. And he said, how many westerns were on the air when Bonanza started? And I said, 35. About 35. I guess the show really depends upon the scripts, the concept, the concept of the character. And the people yeah. who are in it, you know. Yeah, I think the audience has to identify and like very much That's the right. person who plays the lead because most of them that have been successful, the people when there's been Peter Falk or... Uh, Marvelous uh, success. Uh, even Buddy Epson, I think, is right. having good success great now success. because they like him and identify, so I don't see any... Re Were you miss riding horses, though? Or are you pretty tired of well, riding I'll, horses? Well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll miss riding horses for one reason. Because in the new series, I do a lot of running. Upstairs, downstairs, mm -hmm. climbing buildings, jumping off buildings. I never had to do that with a horse. I just got on the horse and away I went. He did the work. Yeah. Now I've got to do it. <laughs> but you have an interest in horses. Uh, you, you, uh... Oh, yes. I, I have never... I haven't given up horses because I have my own... Uh, I have a, a thoroughbred racing stable. Right. And uh, uh, now I have a little ranch out in the valley, which That's is where right. I keep my horses. It's kind of a thrill to wake up in the morning and look out and see all that marvelous country and see all those marvelous horses and to realize that every cent you have is tied up in hay and horseshoes. They're, it's an expensive proposition, isn't oh, it? Yes. So expensive, matter of fact. I went around, before I got the ranch, I had a, uh, I had an occasion to, uh, you know, you have to board your horses or have your own ranch, and they're, they're expensive. As much as they go up to about $125 per month per horse. We have about 25 horses. So it gets to be very expensive, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look at some cheaper places. And I went to one fellow, and he said he wanted $25 per month per horse, but... He kept all the fertilizer. Well, I see, that's the... Uh... Yeah, so I, then I went, I shopped around, and there was one fellow, he wanted $15 a horse, but we keep the fertilizer, he said. And finally, I, I found one fellow, and he said, $5 per horse. I said, do you keep the fertilizer? He said, with $5, there's no fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that would be, that would be a byproduct of a ranch, wouldn't it? I, I love to watch horses. Uh, they're, they're graceful Did and they're beautiful. Did you see Secretary? Well, whether you're a horse racing fan or not, oh. seeing that is something that probably, as the, the knowing people uh, who are in the Thoroughbred Racing yeah. Association say, probably will never be duplicated again in history. I don't see how. Because of the three track records. Yeah. You know what bothers me, though, and one of the sports writers in the, one of the Los Angeles papers had an article today saying, it, in a way, it's a shame because they're saying now the horse is too good to race. 
and will never race again because he's been sold, as most of you probably know, for syndication yeah. for six million eighty-three thousand dollars to be retired to raise new secretariats. But what they fun he'll have. Yes, oh, okay. yes. Not even three years old, and he's going to a stud farm. <laughs> That's right, for the rest of his life. Whoopee. Um, I wish NBC had that policy. <laughs> and you go down and you, and you breed new hosts for The Tonight Show. <laughs> I have a groovy way to live. But, no, but the point he was making... Uh, there was a horse named Kelso, right? Right. That was a uh, tremendous horse, uh, but was gelded, and ran for something like eight or nine years. But the people around the country got a chance to see that horse race. Yes. Uh, now, unfortunately, this horse will never race again. And he says, at least to his thinking, the sports writer, it was kind of a shame because he's not even a three-year-old yet, and now he's retired. Yeah, and isn't it a shame that they can't race the horse anymore? Yes, I, I, I agree. He's become you. too valuable or too good to they race. They can't risk it. Right. I think they're going to, they're going to have two races. I think they'll have mm -hmm. two races... Uh, between now and November, and then he retires to stud. Now, that must cause the owners great concern, does it not? Because I know little about thoroughbreds, but I know that their ankles are like pipe stems. They're very, very small. You have 1,100 and 11 to 1,200 pounds coming down on, as you call them, pipe stems. You know, anything can happen at any moment. And once that happens, a horse's uh, bones do not heal, and the horse must be destroyed. So that is a big risk. It is. It's a, it's a terrible risk, but a, a phenomenal animal and as you say as everybody seems to think there probably will not have, never be another horse like him certainly not in this generation perhaps not for many many years we've uh, ed and i've had a running battle going for years about the horse and the pig horses are not particularly affectionate are they i mean uh, do you, you get attached to a horse uh like you would a dog well yeah you you, you do in a way but horses are not that uh, you know a, a horse will turn on you a horse can kick you if he's frightened or scared they're very skittish, aren't they? They're very, very extremely skittish, very, very <coughs> yeah, But uh, I know, I know of one woman who uh, uh, had a. Uh, she really, she felt, she, she loved the horse, really loved it so much. It was a very elderly lady, and uh, when she died, she left two hundred thousand dollars to the horse in her will. The horse? Yeah. And he never saw a cent of it because her pet poodle broke the will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here setting this up for you. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> no, but people do that. They, yes, they've left great thousands of dollars to cats and dogs, a yeah. uh, couple great hundred thousand people. dollars to horse. Thank We're going to come back and talk about something that you got a lot of calls about last time, but we oh, won't. We'll, we'll get you off the hook this time, right. so that won't happen. <laughs> um, 